how many of you have tried online dating. Have you ever showed up to a date only to see that the other person looked nothing like their profile pic? <laughs> well, that happened with me. Except I was the catfisher. I'm a little embarrassed to talk about it now. But I think there is a lesson to be learned from my complete and utter disaster. I hope my story can be a warning to everyone else. Before I get into that though, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. If you do, your crush will send you a text tonight. If you don't, then your crush will text someone else. I remember when I was a teenager and young love was in the air. Unfortunately, it seemed like Cupid was out for everyone but me. See, I don't know if you could tell by looking at me, but I used to be pretty conventionally unattractive. I was very overweight and had frizzy hair. I had no idea what to do with it. The only thing worse than my acne and style was my self-esteem. My name is Kylie, but my classmates used to call me horrible things. This one time, my mom made me throw a birthday party for my mean classmates, and somebody gave me a scale for my birthday. I never had a party ever again. I hated how I looked, and it just made a horrible cycle of eating junk food and not taking care of myself. It also didn't help that my best friend was the prettiest girl in school. We'll call her Stacy. I used to feel so lucky to have a friend like her, but in retrospect, I think she wasn't much of a friend. There was this one time she invited me to her pool party. When I got there, she took one look at me in my bathing suit and asked me to stay out of the pool. She said I was making the guests uncomfortable. No offense. Trust me, there was always an offense to be taken. But I was desperate and she was my only friend. I decided I didn't have much of a choice aside from hanging out with her. I don't want to sound pathetic, but I thought that maybe a bit of her magic would rub off on me. Everything was a competition. She always pretended she was surprised when she did better than me. She totally kept me around to make her feel superior. One day, she told me to download Tinder, just for fun. She helped me make a profile and I helped her with hers. I couldn't help but hate every angle of me. We sat down for hours and played together. She said she just wanted to see how many matches we got. Almost immediately, her inbox was flooded with messages asking for dates and her phone number. I, on the other hand, had a much different experience. I swiped right on everyone, and there were some pretty weird people in there. I didn't get a single match, not even from one guy dressed as a ninja in his photo. When Stacy took my phone to see how many matches I had, I was humiliated. She tried to hide her smile when she said, What? Nothing? <laughs> Maybe the app is broken or something. I changed the subject and asked her if she was going to talk to any of the guys. But she said no, it was just for fun. Besides, she was too good for online dating. I felt horrible for hours after she left. I kept going in front of the mirror and trying to imagine myself just looking better. Not a single match. I wished that I could just live like Stacy, just for one day. Then it dawned on me, I could. I helped Stacy set up her account and saw her login information for Facebook. At first, I debated doing it. It wasn't fair to break her privacy like that. Then again, it wasn't fair for her to be so much prettier than me, you know? I just wanted some attention, but I ended up getting more than what I signed up for. First, I just wanted to look at the messages. I was about to log out when I got a new match and a message. I clicked to see the hottest guy I had ever seen in my life. I was drooling over the phone. He was straight out of a modeling catalog. It said he lived in a different city, so I figured there was no harm in just replying to his message. Unlike the other guys who sent rude photographs or hey, he had a pretty interesting opening. How much does a polar bear weigh? He asked. How much? I replied. Enough to break the ice. I spat out my drink. I know it's pretty lame and a cheesy pickup line, but I never actually heard the real ending. For those listeners wondering, a female polar bear weighs between 330 and 650 pounds. Never in my wildest dream would I imagine someone as hot as Axel to be messaging me. Okay, maybe not me me, but I was the one being such a great conversation partner. We had so much in common. We liked all the same shows and music, and he made some pretty great jokes. We ended up staying up for hours chatting, and that was only the first night. I ended up using Stacy's account nightly for a couple of weeks. I feel hard for Axel. Like harder than the time I fell and broke my leg. I kept dodging his request to meet up or FaceTime. I even stole some of Stacy's Instagram pics to send him selfies. It's not like I thought I was going to keep it up forever. I just hoped that I would keep it up long enough that he'd fall in love with me for me. Even when he sees me. Well, one night, I thought I was super close to showing myself. We had a long conversation where he told me he really wanted to see me. He said that our conversations were all he had to live for. I was the first thing he thought about when he woke up and the last before he went to bed. 
I told him that I was afraid he wouldn't like me when he saw me. He said that everyone lies a bit with their pictures. He wasn't shallow at all. It was my photos that drew him in, but at the end of the day, it was my personality that won him over. Then, he told me that he loved me. Loved me? I had never even kissed a boy before, and here he was professing to me. I decided, you know what? Let's meet up. We made a plan to meet up the next day. I put on my nicest outfit and all of the makeup I could find. I spent hours and hours to make myself look my best. But in actuality, I was still ugly. As I walked myself downtown to meet up with him, I heard snickering behind me. When I turned, I saw some guys from our class pointing at me. The first guy laughed. What are you so dressed up for? The other asked. We know you don't have a hot date. Well, maybe I do, I shouted. And you didn't tell me? Oh, no. I turned and there was Stacy. I thought she was going to be away this weekend. Or at least that's what she told me when I asked if she wanted to come with me to the movies. She made up some lame excuse, but I know she was just lying to me to get out of making plans with me. I guess, though, I was the last person to be judging her about being dishonest. Stacy? A male shouted. We both turned and saw the tall, dark, and handsome fellow that looked like a model. It was Axel. I know he had no idea what I actually looked like, but my heart was trampled when he ran right up to Stacy. He told her how excited he was for today with the pizza place in the park. He handed her a box of chocolates and a bouquet of red roses. My favorite. For once in her life, even she was speechless. He was even more attractive than anyone she had ever dated before. She was pretty smitten with him and had a flash of realization cross her mind. She asked if she could speak with me privately for a moment, and she would go ahead and meet him at the restaurant. I would have given anything in the world to be a lost polar bear trekking around the tundra. Instead, I needed to have the most uncomfortable moment of my life with Stacy. It went worse than I could have ever imagined it to be. She yelled at me for invading her privacy. She said it was unfair for me to do that to her. I've been such a good friend, and this is how you repay me? She sneered. What did you exactly expect to happen? Did you really think you would just come up and it would be fine? I finally snapped at her. I told her she was such a mean friend. All she ever did was knock me down to make herself feel better. Plus, Axel was in love with my personality, and she might have been pretty and thin, but she was very boring. She slapped me across the face and walked away. She didn't say anything else after that. I just collected myself and walked home. I tried laying in bed and distracting myself, but I just couldn't help myself. I kept finding myself back on Snapchat and Instagram, stalking their posts. I kept telling myself that the date was going to be horrible. Stacy was going to ruin it with her bad taste in music, and he was going to notice something was up. Unfortunately, it didn't work out like that at all. According to their posts, Stacy and Axel were having a lot of fun on their date. They were posting all these selfies for hours well into the night. I stayed up for all of it. The posts didn't let up after the first night though. They kept up for weeks. I had tried to log into Stacy's account to see what was up with them. They were dating, but that wasn't even the worst part. It just seemed that she carried on their conversation as though she had been talking to him the whole time. She pretended to like shows she had never heard of and bands that she once scoffed at. I decided to confront him directly. I might not have been honest, but at least my heart was in the right place. He deserved to know the truth. And a little part of me wished revealing Stacy's lies would make him leave her. I found his social media profile and decided to send him a message. I told him how it had been me the whole time and that I was sorry for lying to him. I said how I loved him and meant everything I said. I thought that leaving me on red was my nightmare, but the reality was so much worse. The Axel that wrote back was nothing like the man I had spent hours chatting with. He was cruel and horrible. He said how hideous and fat I was and how ugly I had to be to catfish him like that. He said that I was lucky that Stacy was not going to call the cops over identity theft. He said I should never write to him again and to give up finding love because I didn't deserve it. I still cry a bit thinking about it. That was how I thought the things between my first love would end. But Axel isn't quite out of my life yet. But you'll have to wait a bit to see what happens because my mind was in another place at that point. I slammed my phone against the wall and broke it. I ran right into the kitchen to start piling bags of chips and pastries in my arms. As I walked back to my room, I caught a look of a scary thing in my mirror. I let my hair get dirty, wore ill-fitting clothes, and I was always dirty. I needed a wake-up call. I needed to start taking care of myself. 
I made a decision that day. I was going to dedicate myself to feel better. I worked really hard and moved away to another city to get a good education. And I started wearing nice clothes and putting on the best cologne and bathing every day. It was not an easy journey, but I worked hard on myself. I took care of my body and exercised all the time. I dealt with so much harassment in the beginning, but after a couple of months, the attention I got changed. I went from snickers and jeers to people asking me out or staring at me with lust. After four years, I ended up landing my dream job back in my hometown. I hadn't stepped foot there since I left all those years ago. It was jaw-dropping to see what happened. All those people that used to tease me and call me names were asking me out. They were all shocked when I asked them, don't you recognize me? There was no one shocked more than the woman who took my vegan order at McDonald's. She might have looked different, but I recognized the blonde, overweight worker anywhere. She didn't recognize me at all until she got a look at my name on my credit card. Kylie? Stacy shrieked. How, how is that possible? I just chuckled. I told her that time is kinder to people who are nice and friendly. You can't be serious, a man shouted. I turned to see Axel, and he looked even worse than Stacy. He was bald and put on a lot of weight. He was also wearing a McDonald's uniform. He had just stepped out of the bathroom with a mop and bucket in his hands. She could not stop staring at me. Turns out, Axel got her pregnant immediately, and both of them had to give up their big-time dreams of school and fortune for parenting and quick jobs. I am now a very successful businesswoman with a great husband and a baby on the way. In the end, I guess I'm pretty grateful for going through all this drama. It was the jolt I needed to get my life on track. Plus, it doesn't seem like Axel was such a prize after all.